chapter 20, beginning in verse 22. Beginning in verse 22, the words of Paul right here. Paul was consecrated to God. No matter what he went through, no matter what he fought, he was a loyal servant of Jehovah God. I'm telling you, I wish today we had some Pauls. Despite everything that we go through, despite all the suffering, despite all the battles, we can utter these statements like Paul said. Today I'm afraid we don't have Pauls in many cases. There's some out there. But many give up on the first little blow of adversity. But listen to Paul right here. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Save that the Holy Ghost witnessed it in every city, saying, The bonds and the afflictions abide me. But listen in verse 24. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I may finish my courts with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now verse 24. It's where I want to get to you right here. But none of these things move me. Do you get that? None of these things move me. He was steadfast. He wasn't going to be moved. He wasn't going to be shaken. But he said, Neither count I my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. I want to speak to you just for a few minutes tonight on oh, none of these things shall move me. Wow, what a statement. None of these things shall move me. Heavenly Father, we come before you, dear Lord, tonight, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, for your anointing, and we ask, Lord, for your spirit, dear God, uh, to be in here, dear God. Uh, Father, we just pray, Lord, for you to just have your way, Lord, in here tonight. Uh, we pray, Lord, for you to just have your anointing, Lord, to flow upon this speaker tonight, Lord. Uh, anoint my lips to speak your word, dear God, and anoint the ears of the congregation uh, to hear this word, that we become steadfast that we can utter the words of Paul tonight, but none of these things uh, shall move me, Lord. Uh, Father, tonight we ask you, Lord, for your anointing, Lord. Uh, we ask you, Lord, for your spirit. Uh, we ask you, Lord, for you to just move in this sanctuary tonight, Lord. Uh, but, Lord, tonight we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, there's not one person under my voice tonight uh, that will tell you they like to suffer. If you are, I'd like to see your hand tonight. You're not really being truthful with me. There's not one person under my voice that tells me they enjoy going through rough times. There's not one that says they welcome these things uh, to come uh, our way. There's not one that would say, I'll enjoy bad, the bad things of life. But the reality is, we may not enjoy those things, but suffering is a part of life. So much like Job said, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Jesus told us like this, Jesus said, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. That means it matter, don't matter if you're not saved or if you're saved. Uh, it tells me, Jesus was saying, it's going to rain on you. <laughs> it's, there's going to be things that happen uh, that come your way. Uh, but let me tell you, as believers tonight, there's going to be times that we suffer. But, but as a time that we go through these times of heartache, those times of pain, those suffering situations... It can do several things uh, in the life of a believer. One of those things I'm just going to mention real quick, quickly, real quick, is 
in those times that we go through those agonies, those times uh, that we go through those sufferings, those times of trials, those times uh, of fights that come our way, uh, it can bring you into a greater dependence uh, upon God. Amen? It will learn you to trust in the hand of God uh, to a greater degree than we've ever did before. Uh, let me tell you, I'm convinced that sometimes uh, that God allows these things to come our way that we can learn to trust in him a little bit more. Can I tell you tonight, if we never went through them, we would never know what it meant to trust in God. If we never had to go through a fight, we would never know what it meant to have a victory. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight? Even in the course of the light of the disciples, there were times that Jesus told them to launch into the boat and to meet them on the other side. Jesus had already told them uh, they were going to the other side. Uh, he already told them he was going to meet them other, on the other side. Uh, but halfway out there, uh, they got caught in the midst of the storm. We know the story. <clears throat> But the point I'm trying to make with this whole outline right here, this introduction is uh, we will never know. We can read about it. Uh, we can read about dependence on God in the Scripture. We can read about God's hand of uh, protection of how he says, peace be still. We can see how God can come walking uh, in the midst of a stormy night uh, when everything's going on. We can read about it. Uh, but until we go through it, uh, we will never know what it's truly like. Did you hear me? Uh, until we never had never had a battle, uh, you would never know what a victory, how sweet victory is. Uh, if David would have never fought Goliath, uh, he would have never known how it was like to, to watch that big ugly giant come down. Uh, what I'm telling you tonight is uh, that when we go through these times, uh, when we go through these afflictions, uh, when we go through these sufferings, uh, it will learn us to depend upon God even more. Uh, and it will learn us one thing. Uh, it will learn us how faithful the promises of God are. Uh, can I tell you tonight the reason that you're standing it's because of the promises of God. The reason that last trial didn't bring you down is because of the promise of God. Amen? The reason you are not out of a house is because of the promises of God. The reason you got food on your head, food on your table, is because of the promises of God. Can I tell you the reason you got clothes on your back is because of the promises of God. The reason you're sitting here tonight uh, is because of the promises of God. Uh, let me tell you, uh, yes, there's going to be some suffering uh, and yes, that suffering will burn like fire. Uh, it will burn when we are in the fire. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, we need to look what that burning is for uh, today. Uh, tonight, let's look at the sufferings of Paul. Uh, despite all of everything that he went through, uh, despite everything that he fought, uh, despite Despite everything that he had happened to him, he uttered these words. He shall not, none of these things shall move me. You see, some of you in here tonight said, need to say, none of these things that I'm going through is going to move me tonight. Amen? Some of you need to say, despite everything that's going long in my life, despite the obstacles, despite the heartache, despite the turmoil, none of these things are going to move me tonight. Uh, when you look at the sufferings of Paul uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 uh, verses 24 through 28 uh, of the Jews five times uh, I received 40 stripes uh, save once twice. Uh, I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck at a night uh, and a day in the deep. Uh, in journeyings often in perils of water uh, in perils of robbery uh, in perils of my own countrymen in perils of heathen, in perils into the city up in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness, in painfulness. And watch, watching this often in hunger and thirst, uh, in fastings often in cold and nakedness, besides those things that without uh, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of the church. Uh, 
despite all of these things uh, that Paul would went through, uh, despite the beatings, despite the stoning, despite the shipwreck, uh, he had an attitude uh, that I shall not uh, be moved. Uh, none of these things uh, will move me. Do you hear me? I'm not talking about being stuck to a pew. Uh, I'm talking about we ain't going to be moved uh, from our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Uh, despite that everything uh, that comes my way, uh, I can still praise him what Paul was saying. Uh, despite being beaten, uh, despite being rocked, uh, despite being stoned, uh, beside, beside being betrayed uh, in everything that come my way, uh, Paul was saying, I shall, uh, none of these things uh, will move me. Uh, can somebody say in here, uh, none of these things that I'm going through tonight uh, is going to move me. None of these things that I'm experiencing tonight uh, is going to move me. Uh, Paul was a man who suffered. Uh, Paul was a man who suffered for the cause of Christ. Uh, Paul was a man who went through it. Uh, oh, but I'm telling you, but despite all of all these things that he went, uh, none of these things uh, shall move him. Uh, none of these things would move him. Uh, in Ephesians, listen, uh, Paul had put his hands uh, in the entire, himself entirely into the hands of God. Did you hear me? In other words, his only concern was doing the will of God. You can read that where he said, I count not my life dearly. He said, the only thing I got in mind is I got to do the will of God. I'm not worried about my safety. I'm not worried about my comfort, convenience, or welfare. I'm only worried about doing the will of him. Amen? I'm only worried about doing the will of Jehovah God. I'm about doing worried. The only thing I'm worried about is pleasing God. In Ephesians 3 and 1, he says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Let me tell you, he would go through all of this suffering. He would experience all of these things for the cause of Christ. Let me tell you, can I tell you tonight, let me just go ahead and tell you uh, you're going to suffer for Christ. Uh, you're going to be persecuted for Christ. Uh, did you hear me? Uh, you're going to suffer some things for the Lord tonight. Amen? Uh, you're going to suffer some things for the Lord. Uh, did you hear me? Uh, you're going to go through some times. Uh, it seems like all hell is breaking loose. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, you're going to go some times uh, when it seems like you ain't seen the salt sun uh, or the stars at night uh, in many days uh, and all you see is clouds uh, and all you see see a storminess, uh, but I'm telling you, despite all of these uh, things you can say, uh, these things shall not move me. Uh, these things ain't gonna move me. Can you shout hallelujah in here uh, and say none of these things are gonna move me. None of these things are gonna move me. He never said you wouldn't suffer. Uh, did you hear me? He never said you wouldn't go through some things. Uh, in fact, Jesus said, in this world, uh, you shall have tribulation. Uh, he said, you shall suffer persecution for my name's sake. That's exactly what he was saying. But despite all of these things, Paul said everything that was coming, he said back in verse 22, he said, I don't know what's coming my way. But despite all of these things that were coming, these things shall not move me. These things shall not move me. Why would they not move Paul? Because he was anchored. He was anchored to the rock of Jesus. Jesus Christ, amen? He had a root around the rock, amen? How many know Jesus said, upon this rock I, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He never said the gates of hell would not come, but what he said was they would not prevail. Paul said, I will not be moved. None of these things would move me. None of these things that come my way are going to move me. Everything he went through. Hello. They weren't going to move him. Amen. Despite everything he said, he said none of these things, not knowing what was going to take place next, not knowing how, how the afflictions that was coming, the bonds, chains he'd be in, the prison cells, Everything that happened in his life. And by the way, for y'all who don't know, the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Ghost, pinned down half of the New Testament 
from jail cell walls under arrest. Did you hear me? But the gospel still had a free course. Amen. Let me tell you, there are those down that you're going to suffer for the cause of Christ. Did you hear what I'm telling you? There are going to be times you people ain't going to like you because you serve Jesus. Amen. If you're looking for popularity in the world, <laughs> you ain't going to be a servant of Christ. Amen. Hello, y'all quiet on me on that. If you're looking for their approval from those that don't know the Lord, <laughs> something's wrong right there. Let me tell you, you're going to suffer for him. You're going to lose some things for him. You're going to go through some fiery trials for him. Amen? You're going to experience some persecution for him. Uh, many have given their lives uh, for Christ. Uh, if you'll read how many have given their lives for Christ, uh, they have some, uh, what did he beheaded? That the tradition tells us, Fox Books, Book of Martyrs tells us, the tradition says that Peter was crucified upside down. How many know what they did to John when he got kept, before he got cast onto the Isle of Patmos? They boiled him, but he, he couldn't see. see he, but he did not die. And they throwed him on a rock island. And he was caught up in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he saw the book of Revelation. Did you hear what I'm telling you right there? There was some persecution that went on. There many of the disciples were beheaded. They were killed. They were martyred for the cause of Christ. Let me tell you something. People say, how do you know it's real? How do I know it's real? Because let me tell you, when some, somebody won't give their life for something that is fake, not this many people, but all of these sufferers uh, because they know it's real. Uh, you say, is it going on today? Let me tell you, uh, many on the mission field uh, have given their life to Christ, have given their life uh, for the cause of Christ. Uh, you look in foreign nations today, uh, such as China and the Middle East. Uh, we've got missionaries around the world uh, in the church of God. Did you hear me? Uh, that are on the mission field uh, in the world right there. Uh, and I'm telling you, there's some that's in Islamic countries. There's some that is in China where they really literally got to smuggle Bibles in because if they get caught with a, thing, with a Bible there, it could mean their very life. It could mean the execution block. It could mean everything. And I think about the missionaries who have given their life for the cause of Jesus Christ. They would not be moved. How many remember Columbine High School? I always heard that the news media watered this down but that little girl they asked that little girl they said the news said that she said do you believe in God yes I believe in God but I was told and I heard from a couple sources the exact word she said was they asked her do you believe in Jesus Christ and her reply was yes I believe in Jesus Christ and they shot her right then and there on the spot for the cause of Christ amen did you hear me for the cause of Christ and we get upset if we get an ingrown toenail and think that's persecution. If her pinky finger's not doing good, we call that persecution. If somebody hurts, says something about us. If somebody don't like us, somebody don't do nothing like we want, we call that persecution. Real persecution is what they experienced in the Bible. Hello. We got it made here in America right now. Amen. Amen. We don't know what persecution is. But I'm telling you, there's many that says, I'm not going to be moved. There's many that says, I'm not going to be moved. I know I heard an old preacher say, we used to tell a story, preacher used to tell a story. If you want to find out who's really got it in the church, have a masked man with a gun come in and say, who will denounce Jesus? If you will denounce him, get outside. The rest of you it won't. Let's line you up, and you'll find out who's really serving Christ. Amen? I'm telling you. Oh, don't tell me you'll give his, your life for him when you won't even give him two hours of your week. Ooh, did I just say that? Yeah. Don't tell me you'll, you'll lay everything, your, your life down when you won't lay your, the other, your physical life down. Amen? 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 Oh, we think it's persecution. We think we got persecution. Let me tell you, people get moved over the least little thing that goes wrong. Amen? 
they get moved over everything that goes wrong. Something don't go wrong, they're giving up on God. Something don't go their way, they get a bad report, they throw in the towel. Say, God, I'm done with you. Can I ask you something? What's that going to change your situation? It's just going to make it worse. Amen? Let me tell you, if you give up on God, you give up on your only hope. Amen? Let me tell you, if you'll stay faithful to Him and say, I ain't going to be moved, uh, you may go through the fire. But let me tell you who's walking right there in the fire with you. Let me tell you who's got your back right there. Let me tell you who's got your strength right there. Let me tell you who says uh, you'll make it through. Let me tell you who's upholding you. Let me tell you who's sheltering you from the fire. It's the hand of Almighty God. It's Christ himself. Amen. We cry over spilled milk while people are getting tortured. Amen. We cry over it. But let me tell you what we're coming to right now. We're coming into a time I'm telling you, I believe that we are in the last few moments of the church age. You're beginning to see it even creep in to America. The hatred of Jesus Christ. I'm about ready to say something political, but I'm going to tell you right now. Can I tell you the reason? Oh, I'm going to... If you don't, well, I'm just going to tell you the truth. The reason these liberals don't like Donald Trump and Mike Prince is because of, cause he stands up for Christian values. He stands up for Israel. And, dev- and he said Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. I know God already decreed it, but thank God we had a president that really put it in full motion. I know it was already the capital, but we recognized it. Thank the Lord. That's the reason they do not like him. That's the reason because he's standing up for our rights. I'm just going to tell you right now. Oh, I'm about ready to say something. If that other one would have got in office, we would have been in a world of mess. We got a little time, wind of time right now. Amen. We better be getting the gospel out. Because let me tell you, that other not said, a Christian, well, if you don't believe in abortion, you don't believe in these things, you just need to change your view. And I said, I ain't changing my view for nobody. Amen? Amen? I'm not changing my view for nobody. I stand on the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, preacher, you shouldn't get political. Well, you need to talk to John the Baptist. You need to talk to Ezekiel. You need to talk to Isaiah. You need to talk to Jesus himself because they stood before kings. Amen? The apostle Paul stood before kings. John the Baptist called it for what it was. Amen? He said, you're nothing more than adulterer. He called him for what it was. Don't tell me the preacher ought to stay out of the politics. That's the reason we're in the mess we are right now because nobody's speaking out against it. Also, what if they hate us? Jesus already told us they was going to hate us. You ain't going to make yourself popular. I ain't here to make myself popular. Amen? They said, Jesus said if they persecuted him, they will persecute you. Amen? If you don't think you're going to get persecuted, let me ask you, when did you become greater than your master? If you don't think tough times are going to come, when did you become greater than Christ? Because Jesus said the servant is not greater than the master. In fact, he said in Acts 9 and 16, Jesus said to Paul, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Meaning, he, got, he was going to go through some things. He was going to experience some tribulation in his life. He was going to experience some turmoil. He was going to suffer greatly for the cause of Christ. After he first got saved, you can read in Acts 9, they come after him right there. And they had to lower him down in a basket at one point. Amen. You, look, you read how they stoned him and left him for dead. There's a lot of belief he may have died because it said he sent you a man that was caught up into the third heaven. Well, the point is, he got back up and he went back to preaching. 
How many know the rocks didn't keep him silent? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you. He said, Jesus said he's going to suffer greatly for my name's sake. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul did. And let me tell you what I've learned a long time. You hear what I'm about to tell you. When God's got an anointing on your life, there's going to be some suffering. Did you hear me? When God's got something for you, there's going to be some suffering. Some people don't want to hear it. How many want the anointing of God on your life? You better be careful when you raise your hand on that. Because if you want the anointing of God, you've got to get crushed before the anointing's on you. Amen? Amen? Oh, you didn't get that. The anointing, he's going to crush you before you get the anointing. When you get the anointing, you're going to suffer for his name's sake. Amen? The anointing don't come without a price. Hello? Hello? It don't come without a price. And I'm convinced if you want the same anointing as someone like Smith Wigglesworth, pay the price to get it. Amen? Amen? Did you hear me? You want the same anointing to be able to do the things that some of these old these saints did. Pay the price they did and get it. But I want to tell you, we don't want to pay the price for the anointing. But despite everything that Paul went through, can I tell you, he said, none of these things move me. How many in here can say none of these things have moved me? Every one of us has went through hell, it seems like, at times, haven't we? Every one of us has experienced things. But we, need to, we got to have the attitude. Some of you are going through something tonight. But you need to say none of these things are going to move me. None of these things are going to come my way. In fact, let me tell you something. Your attitude in it shows a lot. Hello, you want to see what the attitude was of the Apostle Paul? How many know attitude sh- shows you where you're going? Paul did not frown. He had an attitude through the things that he went through. But it wasn't nothing like you and I would think. You see, most of us tonight, we go through something. We're going to put a lemon in our mouth. But I'm going to tell you what Paul said in a couple of scriptures. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 10, therefore, listen, this is strange right here. We don't like to take it, but he said, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. Then we look in 1 Peter 4 and 13, what Peter wrote. But rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ is suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. It wasn't the pleasure in the thing he was going through, but he was taking pleasure because he was suffering for Christ's sake. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? You want me to tell you what you need to do when you're suffering? You don't need to sing the hee-haw tune. Amen. You don't need to sing, I'm giving up. You know what you need to do? You need to, th- you need to understand that when you're weak first and foremost, then Christ is in his strongest in your life. You need to say, I'm going to rejoice like Peter said. Oh, we can't rejoice. Let me tell you right now in Acts 16, Paul and Silas rejoiced. You ain't never been beaten. You ain't never been battered. You ain't never been shackled like they was. You ain't never been in a jail cell like they had been. You've never been put into the inner court where they couldn't nobody get out. But at midnight, they were singing praises unto God. They were rejoicing in their suffering. Did you hear me? 
What else could it be? It was showing faith, but they were rejoicing there. Hello, it, it's all right. To, you know, can I tell you, I'm about ready to bust your bubble here. You can rejoice when everything's good. It's easy to rejoice when we got a full bank account. Amen. It's easy to rejoice when we get a clean belt, bill of health. It's easy to rejoice when everything is going good. But where God tests you at is how you're going to react in the adversity. Hello? You don't believe God? God looks and tests you how you react in adversity. Job, everything he went through. Man, I know he didn't understand why he was going through it then. Heaven did because it was orchestrated in heaven. God knew what he was doing, but Job's reply was, Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him and will maintain my ways before him. Job's attitude. Amen, that's right. Then God said, pray for these three friends. Pray for these three friends who come around and falsely accuse you. Boy, I've always said friends like him, I'd need no enemies. But God told him, you need to pray for these three. And when God began to pray for, when Job began to pray for these three, there was something that began to turn. I know what some people would have said. Some people would have said, I'll pray for them. I'll pray for the fire to <laughs> falls to fall down on them. I'll pray for a rock to hit them in the head. I'll pray for the brakes to get out. That's not what God was talking about right there. Amen. Don't tell me you, some of you ain't ever thought that before. Amen. Amen. Be honest. That's what some people would say. I'd pray for lightning to strike them. I'd pray for them. But that ain't what God was telling them to do. He said, pray for those that persecute you. Because let me tell you, I've learned something. If you read Job, when Job began to pray for them, God began to turn that thing around. Yeah. God began to turn that thing around. Yeah. God would bless the latter end of Job more than the beginning. He had, God would give him twice as much as he had before. Can I tell you, life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% on how we react to it. Amen? Anybody believe that tonight? Life is 10% of what happens to us and 90% on how we react to it. If you want to wallow in the mud and stay there, guess what? You're going to be rolling around with a bunch of hogs. Hello, I'm just telling you the truth. You're going to be wallowing in the pig pen. But I don't have time to stay in the mud. I got to get up. Hey Amen. I got to keep moving forward. Hey Amen. One day I'm going to jump every one of them in here. Life is 10% of what happens to us. And everybody has something to happen. There ain't one body in here that's been exempt from the rule. But 90% determines what we do. I tell people, if you fall short of the glory of God, repent of it. Don't sit there and waller on it. You pick yourself up, you repent and pick yourself up and start going forward. Amen? When things go wrong, start rejoicing. Hello? What I preached on a few Sunday nights ago, when you got a spirit of heaviness on you, that sphere, depression, sickness, anxiety, Isaiah 61 and 3 says, put on the garment of praise. So you see, praise is rejoicing. Amen. Praise is rejoicing. Praise is rejoicing. Praise is rejoicing. Praise is rejoicing. Amen. We don't want to rejoice. I'm, if I step on you, hey man, you know what we want to do? We want to blame God. I'm just going to say this. I'm going to tell you there's a, there's a thought that's going on in the church that tells people they need to forgive God. And that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. God ain't done nothing ever against you. Amen? I'm serious. It's a thought. They're teaching people, forgive God. What's God done? That's the stupidest thing you can ever imagine. 
Can I tell you? They don't, they don't want to look at the source of it. It's Satan. Amen? There's hatred. What we want to do, we want people want to get bitter. That ain't what God's saying to do. If anyone had a right to get bitter, it would have been Job. Look at what things Paul went through. You say, well, I'm going through this. Well, come up here. Let's get some rocks and see how you like to be rocked. Amen? And tell me what feels better. Let me get a whip. I don't know what happened to them two. And when the lashes are on your back, the lashes on your back open, and there wasn't no antiseptics to put in them. There wasn't no such thing as neosporin, but you're still praising. You're still rejoicing. That's the attitude. I know sometimes, sometimes I got to say, God help me. Hey Amen. Anybody else in here with me? God help me. Hey Amen. But then I realize if I start thinking about the goodness of God, all these other things, I'll, I'll get my mind off these other things that happen. Did you hear what I'm telling you? Life is just 10%. Somebody needs to mark this down. Life is 10% of what happens and 90% on how you react to it. I think it makes the devil mad. I think it confuses them. I throw the kitchen sink at them. I've done all this to them. But they're still going around singing, singing the joy of the Lord. Amen. They're still singing the swinging their sword, saying the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm telling you, I think the devil gets mad. He throws everything at us to get us out of church. It upsets him when we come on anyway. Amen? It upsets him when he tries to bring distractions our way and things to get us out from getting into our Bible in our prayer life, but we do it anyway. I don't know about you. Anybody want to trouble the devil tonight? Anybody want to make him mad tonight? Let me tell you what you do. When he tries to start throwing these things at you, start rejoicing, start praising, and come on to church anyway. Amen. Come on to church anyway. Amen. Come on to the house of God. Start getting your Bible and pray anyway. Amen. I ain't worried about how you feel. It ain't about your feelings. It's about your faith in God tonight. It's how we react to it. Despite all that Paul went through, he would not be moved. You've seen his sufferings. You've seen his attitude, but he would not be moved. Don't you know the devil was already mad at Paul? How many know Satan used Paul at one time to persecute the church? Now one of his greatest disciples was going to become one of Christ's greatest apostles. Amen? Amen? He wasn't no longer persecuting the church. He was persecuting whole Satan himself. Amen? You know that the devil didn't like him. He already changed camps, and he already wasn't giving a dent to that old devil. But let me tell you, you know it was after him. Despite the suffering, despite the persecution, let me tell you, he had the attitude, I'm not going to give up. Did you hear me? Pretty much saying he would not quit. Let me tell you, the only way you'll miss out on your move of God is if you quit. The only way you'll, you listen, that you'll, listen, you quit, you forfeit. That's something to think about right there. Despite everything, he said, I'm not quitting for my work. He said, I got a gospel to carry. I got a testimony of Jesus Christ. He wouldn't stop him like I told you earlier. He was stoned, and he was left there for dead. He may have even died. But let me tell you, he would get back up, and he would go to the next city and preach. Then he would return to the city where they stoned him at and start preaching a little bit more. The beatings and the batterns would not shut him up. He was singing praises at midnight. Despite every attempt... He would not be moved. But it didn't derive him from his, out of his comfort. He was still comfortable, amen? He wouldn't let that trouble bring him down. 
Let me tell you these things that that devil do your way. They're nothing more than weights to bring you down. That's all they are. But he knew something in the midst of trouble. I'm going to tell you something about him. He didn't seem too concerned about the trouble, did he? In fact, when I read him, he seemed unconcerned about it. Yet even when he was experiencing sorrow, he was rejoicing. You mean you can go through trouble and be just like nothing's going on? Peter did when the not next night before he was being executed. He was sleeping. He was going to be on the chopping block. But what was he doing? He was just sleeping away. He didn't want concern that his head was on the execution block. He was next up to be executed. Hello. When we get a hold of who God is, we're in his hands. Amen. Paul was in the will of God. He was in his hands. He knew nothing was going to happen. Listen, if it did, I'll get there in a minute. But let me tell you something. Romans 8 and 37 tells us something. Nay, in all things. In all things. Get that word, all things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It didn't say a few things, did it? It didn't say a short few little items, did it? What did he say? All things. What are we in all things? More than conquerors. That means I've got this through Christ. I can overcome it through him. You see, he was a conqueror. If you don't quit, you will conquer. Did you hear me? If you don't quit, you will conquer. But if you quit, you're going to be conquered. Do you get that? If you don't quit, you'll be a conqueror. But if you quit, you'll be conquered. Satan will conquer you if you quit. Amen? What did Paul say? He had a conversation. The reason he was really unconcerned, I don't need this tonight. Maybe I'll spit my teeth out again like I did Wednesday night. I got some Paul that left up here. <laughs> Listen, why did Paul, why was he unconcerned? I want to tell you something. His conversation wasn't fixed down here. He had his view up there. Did you get that? We miss out. We got something better than this down here. He knew where he was going. I quoted this last night, but let me quote the whole thing. Let me go a little further tonight. Philippians 1 and 21 says, For me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what shall I choose if I what not? For I am straight between twixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is to me is to me is more needful for you. See what Paul's desire was. Let me tell you, I, you're going to think Paul's crazy, but he said, "I'd rather go on and be in glory." Amen. It's getting hot, even with air conditions running. Let's pray for snow. I thought I could sleep that day there. Paul had a desire. He said, my, my gain, the great, the, my greatest desire is to go on to be with the Lord. That's what he was saying. He said, it would be far better for me to go on to be in the portals of glory. But he said something else. He said, for me to abide here is more needful for you. See, Paul already knew if he took his last breath where he was going. Paul knew that the end of this earthly life wasn't the end of it all, but it was really the beginning of life. He said, I'm fixed between a great gulf. He said, my greatest desire, and it's far better for me, is to go on to be with the Lord. Amen? But nevertheless... It's more needful for you that I stay around here a little bit longer. I believe God would say maybe also it's 
more needful for you to trouble the devil a little bit longer, too. Hey, man, I'm convinced. No six months I was sick. I wasn't, you know, I was pretty bad sick. I ain't going to tell you how bad. But, you know, three days in the hospital wasn't too fun. But I'm convinced God wasn't done with me. If he was, I'd have had a far better reward than to be here. I'd have been, I'd have been like Paul. I'm convinced that he wants me to trouble the devil in Houston Town, Pennsylvania a little bit longer. Amen? I'm convinced he wants me to abide here a little bit longer. But let me tell you tonight, those who have a view of heaven and being with Christ can look down on these things, these troubles of the earth and the threatening rage of the heathen and the malice of hell and say none of these things can move me. Hey Amen. When you get a proper view of where you're going, you're going to say none of these things can move me. I think we miss the proper view. I think we miss the idea of heaven. Amen. I think we miss the the idea that if we depart this world that we got a far exceeding great reward that's waiting for us beyond our greatest ma imagination. I think we miss it. I think many people think this is it and it's over but I come by to tell you it's not over. Keep your eye on the prize tonight. Keep your eye up towards heaven tonight because I'm telling you these things are temporary but eternal life with Christ it's forever. I'm not going to be moved. You see, I try, I've been, there's things that want to draw you away. Hello? I'm not going to be moved. Some of you need to say, these things ain't going to move me. There ain't no sickness going to move me. Did you hear me? There ain't no depression, discouragement, or despair going to move me. Hey man, there ain't no struggles, accusation, attacks, uh, gossip, fear is going to move me. No, I mean nothing is going to move me. The devil's going to try, but I'm not going to be moved. Did you hear me? People's going to try, but I'm not going to be moved. People will come and they will try, and that I'm not going to move because I'm going to finish my course. I've got a short course to go, and we're going to finish this course with joy. That's what Paul was said, my third and final point. That's what he was said. I'm going to finish my course with joy. No, None of these things shall move me. Some of you need to say none of these things are going to move me tonight. None of these things are going to move me. You need to quit letting these things move you. You need to quit talking about how big these things are. And you need to tell them things how big your God is. Hey Amen. Some of you need to say, I'm on the rock. I'm on the solid foundation. I got the chief cornerstone. Hey Amen. I'm telling you, I've found it tonight. And none of these things shall move me. None of these things shall move me. I'm hurrying. Marcy, you can get ready to start making your way up. I'm on my final point. I got a few more things to say right here. But Paul said, I got to finish this course. With joy. He didn't say with depression. He didn't say with anxiety. He didn't say with fear. He didn't say with anger. What did he say I have to finish this course with? Joy. He said, I'm going to run all these things that come my way. They're not going to move me. Because I got to finish what God has called me to do. I've got to finish my course with joy. Hey man, I'm not letting the enemy bring me down. Yes, I went through all of these things. Yes, I didn't know what was going to befall me, but I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to finish this course with joy. Remember, what he's talking about, the course is this life. This life is just a course and it's like a race. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. On this course, one is going to have difficulties. But don't let none of these difficulties move you. Don't let them direct you off course. As I told you last night in this race, it's not... Where are you finished? It's as long as you finish. It's as long as you cross the finish line. If you quit, you'll never cross the finish line. 
If you veer off course, you won't cross the, unless you get back on course and you stay off course, you won't cross the finish line. People quit on God. Plain and simple. The reason people don't cross the finish line when they backslide is because they quit this race that is set before us. It is a race. This course has a beginning and it has an ending. Paul said, I'm going to finish my course with joy. See, here's where I want you to get tonight. This course had a beginning and this course has an ending. You don't want to hear it, but it's a fact. This body has a, it had a beginning at birth, and it has an ending at death. This body here, soul and spirit goes on to be in eternity. If we go to heaven, to be, be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If you go to hell, you're in, you're in the pits of hell. But this body is decaying. This life here on this earth is temporary. James said it like this, what is life? It's a vapor. One moment it is here, and the next moment it is gone. Can I tell you, the newspapers around the world are filled with obituaries of people of different ages. From newborns until up in years. There's not one of you in here promised another breath. I know a pastor down in North Carolina passed away. He preached a message, something like this. A few, it wasn't totally different. He was talking about how short life was. The thing is, the next day, a week later after preaching that message, he went on vacation to Florida, swimming or something, had a massive heart attack and went into eternity. Must have been in good health. Life, folks, has a beginning and an ending. The course is our life. We don't know how long we got to go on that course. Amen? We're not sent here to be in this world that is here right now. We're passing through right now. Amen? We're passing through. I know we're coming back with him, but that's under a totally different circumstance than what it is right now. We're just passing through this way. We're just here for a little while on this course. You see, life could, is just a vapor. We don't know when we're going to finish our course. But the reality is, it's going to happen. One way or the other. The reality is, it's going to happen. We're going to finish this course, either by taking our last breath here on earth, or that trump of God's going to blow in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. I want you to think how quick. You're one breath away. I told you this morning, you're one breath away and, one blink, and you're one twinkling of an eye away, one blow of a chauffeur away from eternity. This course is going to have an ending. You don't need to, you're too late to run off course now. You've gone too far to look back now. This time we run this course with joy and say, I'm not going to let anything move me. Everyone's standing in here. Let me tell you what Paul said to Timothy. 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 8. I quoted a little bit last night. Paul's words were right there as he was getting ready to depart. Some of the last words the apostle would write. For I am ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I'm telling you, some of you need to get the mindset, I'm not going to let anything move me tonight. Maybe you're going through that persecution, you're going through that storm tonight, you're going through that battle. I've come by to tell you, don't let these things move you. God's going to see you through. You stand firm. You stand strong. You stand strong in the faith of Jesus Christ and in the power of his might. Some are saying, 
Well, this is more than I can bear. I've come by to tell you it's not what you can bear. He said, cast your burdens upon him. Cast your cares upon him. Don't let these things run you off course. You need to say, I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to stay the course. And I'm going to finish my course with joy. Can I tell you, every day passes is another day off of this joy. How many would say tonight, I'm going to finish my course with joy. I'm not going to be moved tonight. I'm going to stand strong in his might. No hell or high water. Though things come my way. Though these things fight me. Though these struggles have been. I'm, not go I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to finish my course with joy. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to utter those words like the Apostle Paul. I don't know what's going to befall me. But I'm going to finish my course. I'm going to finish my course. Oh, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Touch each one.